Welcome to the Addiction Connection Podcast, connecting the hope of the gospel heart of addiction. I'm Mark Shaw, and this guy, yeah. I have not had a podcast with this guy since February or January of earlier this year. This is Jim Quigley, and what's funny about that is we emailed and said, hey, we got to do more podcasts. Let's po- try to podcast every week, and, and then now it's been like eight, nine, ten months. I don't know, but uh, I have missed you. And I'm so happy you're back on. Welcome, Jim. Thanks, Mark. Has it been that long? I didn't realize it was that long. Yeah, because it because well, the the thing I want to talk about, let's just jump into it. Okay. The recriminalization of uh drugs in Oregon, it just it just kind of hit the news again in September. So we're not too far behind. It's November, but we're a little behind. But they they started the process in January, February of recriminalizing uh, drugs like fentanyl and methamphetamine and, and others. And so um, <clears throat> September 1, it uh, started to roll out again. And so what do you make of this recriminalization? They decriminalized it, remember, yeah. and now recriminalized. So I'd love your take on that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it just you know fundamentally goes down to how people are viewing um, the problem of addiction, right? So you got a whole bunch of secular people that are looking at human beings, and they have already because they're not they're not looking at humans through a biblical lens. They're already they're already um, starting off on a bad foot. Right. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, most people you talk to in a secular sense, they will say that human beings are inherently good. They're born good, and um, the ones that get off are are a product of their environment. But but because human beings are good, um, if you give them the right opportunities, uh, they will self-correct. And so they tried that with the decriminalization. And there's a lot of people that that um, that hold up Portugal as a, an example of, of what to do there, because Portugal did the same thing a long time ago. And I've not really gotten in depth with it, with it but um, um, but I think that there's statistical information to show that it was a productive thing that they de- decriminalized. But I know that there's a, a really heavy emph- emphasis on people that um, in Portugal that that had drug problems that um, that as soon as they said they wanted to uh, stop, there were there was like a whole list of resources available to them, um, like from everything from housing to um, to, uh, to money to start a business. Um, I I'd be curious to look into Portugal's, uh, uh, results because statistics are easily manipulated, you know, right. Um, you, if you have a control group and you want to maintain a control group looking positive for your agenda, then you just find some way to, to exclude all the negatives, you know, out of there real quick, you know, Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty easy to do. Um, so I'd r- really like to see um, what's happened over there, but uh, here it was just an abject failure. Um, they uh, they decriminalized and they basically got an open open air drug market right there on the streets of um, Portland, and uh, and it, it it started to attract a ton of people that um, wanted to just go and live that lifestyle, which is very depressing and sad, but. Um, it wasn't it wasn't because people are inherently good they wanted to go do that stuff. <laughs> so, no, right, right. So, no, that that's a big theological point that I mean it seems obvious to us but yeah. but it's not obvious in the world. You, that's a great point. So so they they of course need something. They need some kind of uh you know um uh recourse to try to help stop this now. So the only way they can is by, you know, criminalizing it again. So, yeah. Well, and so the article I'm reading, it's out of Oregon, and they said the rollback of ballot measure 110 went into effect September 1. Here's how it started. It says, Oregon has ended its experiment with drug decriminalization starting September 1st of this year, just a couple months ago. Possession of small amounts of illicit substances are once again considered a misdemeanor crime. Now, four years ago, what they did 
is if you got caught with any amount of drugs, even like fentanyl, methamphetamine, um, you received one a one hundred dollar ticket. All right, you got a ticket, but that ticket could be voided if you went and did a needs assessment. So if you go and do a needs assessment, you can get the ticket erased. And the idea was to redirect people to substance use disorder help, you know, rather and and seeing them as having this disease and being good people, like you're talking about, they have a disease. So let's direct them to treatment and rehabilitation help rather than direct them to jail, mm -hmm. you know, which is punishing these good people that, that you know. And so, um, but it it was a huge failure. It didn't work. People, you know, didn't take it seriously. I don't think a lot of them followed up with that. And so um, now, now they're rolling it back and changing it. And so, you know, imagine if you got a one hundred dollar ticket, Jim. All you have to do is do a needs assessment. Would would you have done that back in the day? No. <laughs> no. I don't have time for that. You just would have put it with the other other five tickets you already had. I, right. I would have, you know, put it with those. Oh, well, and and again, I mean, even that idea, like, oh, of course, Jim's going to want to do a needs assessment and get help because he's a good person. That that goes that goes right along with your point and what you're talking about here with uh, decriminalization. But so they tried it for about four years, didn't work. Now they're doing uh, deflection programs, and I was trying to, to see what they mean by that. Deflection, here's the definition, is a collaborative effort between law enforcement and behavioral health entities to deflect people using drugs into treatment and out of the criminal justice system. So that's what they mean by that. Mm -hmm. But how it works will depend on each county in, in Oregon. <clears throat> so they're... Um, they're trying to work that out to where somebody gets arrested, they get a misdemeanor, but they go to this deflection program with deflects them over to behavioral care rather than um, jail or what have you. So, and honestly, um, you know, in that uh, there's an opportunity, I believe, in in that because um, they, they have what they're called drug courts. Pretty much, they're pretty commonplace in in most states. Yeah, and what drug court is is that. Um, instead of going to jail, then um, the person goes to a program and they have to go to court like once a week and they have to be subject to random drug testing. Right. But, but you know, a lot of times what they're what they're doing is they're putting them in some state funded, um, you know, secular program for that time. And, you know, you and I both um, know that they're not really learning uh, how to uh, mm -hmm. what their uh, problem is or what the solution is in those things. So it's, it becomes a revolving door. But the opportunity is, is that if um, a program such as ours, um, you know, gets a good enough reputation, then then I can actually go and say, hey, look, we'd like to be an option. We'd like to be an option for people um, uh, that uh, may desire to come to a program like ours. Let let us do that and we'll bring them to their court dates and and make sure they get drug tested. But let us have them for a while and. So I'm actually trying to get yes. on that in my my in my county right now. So well, our verse for this episode, Romans 3:23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There you go. Mm. It's not all are good and all just, you know, maybe make a couple of innocent mistakes. We're all sinners who fall short of the glory of God. And that has to that has to be the foundation when you think about policies and and um and I wish our government had more of a, a view of Christ and biblical truths because it would help them in making policies that would actually work rather than experimenting with decriminalization and no. it didn't work in Oregon. Uh, not to say they're not going to try it some other place or maybe even try it here again and think, well, we can do it better this time. But I just, when I saw this in February and I saw it again in September, I go, I've got to have Jim back on because decriminalization, we talked about it when it first happened, like this is a bad idea. We're on podcast record of saying this is a bad idea. And then now. Yeah. And to follow up on the Portugal while while um, you were talking, I quickly just Googled it real fast. And, yeah. And quite a few articles popped up and one from 
the Wharton School, which is a you know um, a highly prestigious school, um, they uh, the the article the article's um, uh, title is "Is Portugal's Drug De- Decriminalization a Failure or Success?" The answer isn't so simple. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so um, so they they talk about all the positives. I just briefly skimmed it. But um, halfway through the article, it says the unraveling of a system decriminalization is still just a part of a larger issue. So they they are now um, having it's it's unraveling in Portugal even. So, yeah, yeah. Well, because of biblical truth. There we go. Yep. My hope is they see the consequence of it because I, I never like that idea of like just taking their consequences away. It's like, man, they they still need they need to know like this isn't okay. You know, this yeah. is wrong. And absolutely, you know, we live in a day of participation trophies, and everybody is good. And we've lost some things that uh, that I value anyway because I make everything a competition. But um, you're but very that's competitive. A di- <laughs> I am. It's it's sad. All right. Are you trying to find a way to talk about pickleball? No, you know, I I, yeah, I I usually am, but right now I hurt my foot and I'm out for about ten weeks, so I'm oh. I'm uh, a little bit on the depressed side. So, oh, no. <laughs> so pickleball yeah. withdrawal. Pickleball withdrawal. It's a it's a thing. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Jim. And we'll end the, this podcast on this, but I, I want to do some more with you. So to our crowd, thanks for watching. Click thanks, on the like button. That's what everybody says at the end. And take care and God bless. God bless.